try to make this as quick as I can, but be forewarned, I'm fairly long-winded. So I'm starting with this image in Lightroom. Um, the reason I like starting in Lightroom is because I can do kind of basic edits from there and then kind of move forward. So this is straight out of the camera and I, it's not that great of a photo, but it's good for what I'm going to try to do with it. So, um, first I usually just kind of auto tone the exposure, um, and that's a little bit too light. So I like doing strong tonal curves, which I think makes them a little bit more vibrant. Again, this is just based on how I shoot. And then I usually like things a little bit warmer for some weird reason. So I'm going to change that temperature for a little bit. And then that looks fairly decent. Um, I might brighten it up just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is down on the uh, ribbon here, I'm going to right click and hit edit in um, Adobe Photoshop. So one great way instead of just opening up the file from wherever the file is on your computer if you do it this way lightroom will actually edit that exact file and it will keep it in the catalog so you don't have to go back and forth between lightroom and photoshop you can have it kind of do it for you so i'll say open in photoshop and it'll start doing that um, this just helps keep things organized as opposed to you know saving the file here and then opening it in Photoshop and then having to re-import it into Lightroom. So I try to do really simple edits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command J, which duplicates my background layer. Um, and then I always keep that background solid just in case I mess up, I have something to go back to. So I do, I honestly do Command J a couple times just for fun. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically mask out like a, um, like a sunbeam using curves. So what you can do is go down to the adjustment layers down here and then click create a new adjustment layer and click the curves layer. And that'll bring up this little guy over here. And then what I like to do is just because I do things kind of dramatically, I'm going to bring that way down like that. And then what happens is on the curves level, you have this uh, mask, this layer mask. So I'm going to paint out the places that I want to be kind of highlighted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into brushes, which if I just hit B, it takes me to brushes. Um, I don't think I have my brushes character over here. So I'm going to view window brush, 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 brush. And then I've downloaded a bunch of different like sky presets. Um, you can make your own brushes or you can just go find like, uh, I don't even know what these were called, like, uh, sunbeam brushes and, uh, you can just load them in and use that. So that's kind of what I do. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit the X key, which will flip my background and foreground color so that I'm painting black. And then I'm going to make this brush as big as it can be. And then I'm just going to tilt it to where I feel like the light should be coming from. And as soon as I do that, you can see that faint kind of light right there where it, it took away, essentially it high, it hid that layer, uh, that adjustment layer that we just made. So I like to mix brushes just because I don't like everything looking so obvious. And then I usually even blur that layer too. So once I have a good idea of what I want and you can kind of, um, you can go back and forth so you can see it by disabling it. Um, once I have kind of what I want, I go to filter blur and I usually do like a motion blur just because then I'm able to give it that motion of where I want the light to go. So I use that same angle. something like that and you can play around with what it would look like it's really subtle but I feel like it makes a difference then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this entire layer and then it makes it really dark so I don't want to do that so what I want to do is I want to come into this adjustment layer and bring this up and then I want to in simply invert that mask so Command I just inverts that layer and all that does is it so what I did at first was I put dark on all one area and now I'm making that other area lighter 
So it just kind of enhances the effect in the opposite direction, if that makes sense. Um, and that's kind of how I get that like uh, light beam kind of thing going. And you can, you know, mess with that however you want. Um, from there, what I usually like to do is I like to have symmetry in photos. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to flip this layer. So I'm going to hit Command T, which brings up my transformation tools, and then right click uh, Flip Horizontal, and then Enter. And then I'm going to create a layer mask for it. And then in this layer mask, I'm going to brush with a normal brush. I'm going to brush out my dog. Let's see if that makes a little bit more sense. And all that that does is kind of help create that symmetry that looks real nice in photos. And if it's something like this where you can't really tell what it would be anyway, I think it just kind of helps bring it all together. I paint some of it off so it's not too obvious. put those filters back on and that's what's so great about having these as different layers is that you can just pull them above so you don't have to have like if you you know if you were to paint that in photo it would be a lot different so the last thing that I like to do is I like to do a dodge and burn layer of the dog so this is actually my dog Charlie and I like to do dodge and burns just because it helps bring out his natural highlights. And what I usually do is I overkill it on one layer and then I can drop the opacity down when I need to. So um, I'm gonna hit the dodge, which is gonna make things darker. I'm sorry, lighter. So I'm gonna use that I want to go to highlights and make it a little bit bigger and then drop my exposure down. I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Oh boy, that's way too much. So let's make it maybe mid-tones and I'm going to drop my exposure down even more. And I'm kind of just going on what his natural uh, highlight areas are anyway, but you can do this to make, I mean, even with like a person, I've seen people do it. It's kind of like contouring. You can, you can make a person's face look thinner or um, uh, like thin out arms or anything doing this. It's pretty neat. So now that I have that, I'm going to go to burn and I'm going to do basically the same thing in the opposite direction. So you can see it just makes it a little bit more of a dynamic effect on the dog. I'm actually going to tone that down because I don't like how overdone it is. But I like being able to overdo it in the image and then just bring the opacity of that layer down. 
The last thing that I like doing is a sharpened face layer where um, what I'm going to do is go to filter. So I created a copy of my background layer. I brought it above my dodge and burn layer and I'm going to go to uh, the filter menu and then other high pass. And I like doing it kind of ridiculous, like I said, and then toning it down. So I'm going to go to 59 and hit OK. And I know it looks crazy right now. That's OK. Then I'm going to go to overlay in the uh, layer menu. And it made everything, it, it's basically the same idea as like a sharpen tool. And so it makes everything look a lot sharper. So I like to do that for the dog. I don't really want to do that for everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a layer mask, paint the entire layer mask black, and that way I can paint in where I want that sharpness to be um, by painting into that layer mask white. So I'm simply going to, oh, that's a lot on the eyes. And then again, what I can do is just bring that whole layer's opacity down if I don't like it. And that's usually what I do. So we started here and ended here. It just looks a little bit more dynamic. Um, a lot of this copying from one side to the other, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Here he's kind of in the, in the, the weeds a little bit. So um, this faded thing might not look too great, but I guarantee if you show that to someone who didn't see the process, they wouldn't even think anything of that. So um, I also shoot with a really low aperture so that I can have that blurring because when it's a really blurred foreground and background, it's super easy to do that cloning. When it's not, if you're shooting um, pretty closed and most everything's in focus, it's a lot harder to do that. So. Um, you have to think about that as you're shooting to what kind of styles you want to shoot in before you edit the, the image. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how I do it. So then once I save this, the cool thing is once I save this, um, when I go back into Lightroom, it created a virtual copy and it edited that copy. So I still have the original um, and then right next to it is where it will keep the edit. So it's got to take a second to load, but. Okay. Well, give me a second. Oh, because it's still saving, that's why. So once that saves, that'll change it. So again, that's not really a great image to start with, but it kind of gets the point across. Um, the, the other cool thing f for people instead of dogs is if you use that high pass um, if you invert that layer it does the exact opposite so instead of making it sharpen uh, it makes it not blurry it just it just smooths it out so I, I oddly enough also shoot boudoir and I use that a lot for skin tones because it doesn't um, it doesn't do if you're using Lightroom and you use like the the tool that kind of blurs out skin tones it doesn't do it nearly as well as Photoshop does. So I like doing that high pass. I invert it and then I overlay it and it just kind of smooths everything out and then I can paint in where I want that. So um, I use it a lot for like around the eyes when if, they, if they're if they not used to wearing makeup or if the makeup artist isn't that great and they kind of get those lines towards the end of the shoot, um, I like to be able to go in and kind of smooth out under and around their eyes. So that works really great for that. And then arms, I feel like women are always really self-conscious about arms. So being able to smooth those out helps a lot. So it saved it. So let's see. So here's the change in Lightroom. Here's, oh, that's not the original image. Here's the original image. And here's the changes that we made in Photoshop. And that's it.